Do you remember these? Did yes. you have one? No. I really wanted one. Did you not have one? Yeah, but I never had one. Maybe I nicked one of these. They were very uh, expensive. They were. One of the most, what my mom always said, most anyway. <laughs> bicycles in history is being relaunched for a new generation of fans. So we're going to be <laughs> pedalling back in time to take a look at how the cult classic, the Rally Chopper, became so iconic. Aren't they beautiful? Now, we have uh, a special prop here in the studio with us this morning. You'll see it any minute now. For this trademark handlebars, recognise them, an iconic seat. Of course, we are talking about the Rally Chopper. It was the bike that children dreamt of having in the 1970s. We didn't have one, did we? No, neither of us had one. Both of us wanted one. But <laughs> yeah. what is uh, trademark handlebars, uh, that seat, the gears, wasn't it? It was the famous gears that you fiddled with. That was, uh, that was always the, uh, the thing that seemed very cool back then. You're going mad for this. You've been sending us pictures of you with your rally choppers and uh, here are a couple of them for, uh, for starters. Look, this is Kevin Bayliss with his brother back in the 80s. Kevin says he broke his arm on his chopper trying to do a jump on a ramp. And this is Richard in 1977 after he won the South Molton Cycling Proficiency Award on a chopper. How did he Very get on that? <laughs> you did a stepladder. Like, it's enormous. <laughs> So any lucky people who did manage to have a chopper when they were a kid, send in your pictures. What was there? There was oh, another no. one. Well, there was another one that wasn't a chopper that was like a chopper. Oh. I can't remember what that was. Yes, there was a grifter. That's it. My no, brother had a grifter, grifter, but that was like the sort of cheaper, later alternative. Yes. Uh, we're going to get lots of... Uh... Chopper memories. You've been sending us in some great pictures of you with your chopper bikes over the years. Should we show some now? Yes. This is Steve Bottomley. <laughs> That's brilliant. Look at the flares as well. Oh, Steve and his mum having a backy on the chopper. Uh, they hired it at a caravan park in Filey. Purple was in fashion that year. Yes, it really was. We have a whole family of chopper fans coming up with Grandad Roy, son and grandchildren, Corey and Reuben. Roy got a Mark I chopper for his 12th birthday in 1970. That's a cool collection, isn't it? And here is Tony Higgins. Back in 1972, <laughs> one day I'll be able to sit on it. Uh, Toby, uh, Tony said he was the first kid on the estate with a chopper and his dad told him he'd eventually be able to fit it. We hope he could. I bet that took years. Finally, here's <laughs> Tim Weller with his friend Peter in Somerset. Looks like Tim might be another person. <laughs> what was it? Was it that they were so expensive you had to buy an adult one? Yeah, exactly. So it lasted you for your life. Room for growth. <laughs> yes, uh, time to go. Tim Weller looking like Paul Weller there, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> lovely pictures. We'll try to use some more of those before the end of the programme. Brilliant. Thank you. Valley Chopper was the bike that most children dreamt of having in the 1970s with its trademark handlebars and iconic seat. And now the distinctive design is being relaunched for a new generation of fans. Jane McCobbin has been taking a pedal down memory lane. Behold, a bike born in Nottingham in 1967. By the 70s, a style icon for little kids. By the 2020s, a cult classic for big kids. Today, being relaunched for a new generation. So join us as we deep dive into the crazy cultural impact of the chopper. And who knew it played such a big part in the life of Harry Potter? My name's Harry Potter. This is a small part of my Valley Chopper collection. How big is the collection? I have 60 to 70. I've had hundreds. This Harry Potter lives in Barmouth, North Wales, with a bike that has been turning heads for almost 50 years. <laughs> this is where the obsession started. This is my dad and his mates and his bike. This was in 1971, the summer. He had one of the first orange ones. That's where it all started and I began from there. How much time do you spend on this? I get up at five in the morning, some mornings cleaning them, doing other stuff with them. <laughs> so yeah, it's a big part of my life and I, I do love it. Have you got a partner? Yeah. And uh, how yeah. do they feel about she this? She loves it. Yeah, she, she's all right. She's happy me doing my thing. She gets to do her <laughs> thing and then we get our time together. What's the charm? What is the charm? I just enjoy it and enjoy them. They're different, they're unique. It's a talking point. Everybody's fascinated by them, all ages. Everyone appreciates what they are. 
And yeah, they, they look pretty cool. I stack them all nicely. They all have to be in line. I count up the same colour next to each other because that gives me a little bit of it. <laughs> Ick. <laughs> and obviously the Y seats have to go together. Yeah. Let's be clear. This is just so that you can come into this room oh, yeah. and look at them. Yeah, yeah, not many people come in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's just my benefit. Yeah. Boys and toys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pop a little man cave. <laughs> the chopper was designed by Tom Caron. He's the man who designed this, the Pope Mobile, and this, the Marble Run. But this was bought by 1.5 million people before production ended in the 1980s. And what made it so special was this. Supergrass helped to cruise the chopper back into pop culture in the 1990s and since then its fan base has kept on growing. So meet Michael O'Reilly who throws a big party for around 300 chopper enthusiasts every single year. My wife jokes it's saying a load of weirdos in a field talk about kids' bikes, and she means that in the nicest possible way because it is, they are kids' bikes, um, yet the majority were ridden by 15 stone adults, you know, we, they were never designed to be ridden like that, and they are. Buddies Hugh, Chris, and Gary are spreading their chopper love all over Bournemouth. It's just a really nice way to have a chat with random people. If you drive past someone, they'll just shout out, Chopper! <laughs> they'll just, just say things and like, yeah, wicked! And... In fact, Hugh and Chris got engaged on their choppers. A lot of my chopper riding friends said that uh, Christine only agreed to marry me for my chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Cranley's brother was the stuff of chopper legend back home in Dublin. He was always a bit wild. I was I was way more reserved, but he was always a bit wild. <laughs> Here's a picture of my brother in 1987 doing mad things on a chopper. And funny enough, he's never had kids. <laughs> chopper Dave went even further. My name is Chopper Dave. Um, back in 2015, I took on the world's biggest cycling event, which was the Tour de France, on my Rusty Rally Chopper. A uh, completely bonkers idea. Uh, take on the Alps, the Pyrenees, uh, and do what the professionals do, but on my authentic Rally Chopper bike. And if anyone should know the credentials of this vehicle, it's David Croft, Sky's chief Formula One commentator. As a young kid pedalling around the streets of Stevenage, there was no other forward transport. <laughs> what other bike could get your mates on the back and the records that you bought from the uh, record shop downtown. What other bike could you injure yourself severely on on the gear stick that was somehow put right at the front where well, you could do that? But what other bike looked as good as the chopper? Totally impractical, absolutely beautiful. Bring them back. Well, your wish is Rally's command. This limited edition new model goes on sale today. Bit pricey, mind. Grown men all over Britain and beyond are getting very excited. Jane McCubbin, BBC News. Always wanted one, never, never had, had one. one. But we've got a couple in the studio this morning. So I have. Uh, we're joined now by Lee Kidger, who's Managing Director of Rally, and by Chopper fan. We saw him in the piece then, cycle coach, Chopper Dave Sims. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Chopper Dave, that's quite a nickname. It is, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with it. But you love them. I do. They're so iconic. They've got so much personality. They've got character in abundance. Everybody knows them around the whole world. They're just, they're just amazing bikes. That's interesting you say that, because I wondered whether they were a kind of uniquely British thing. No, I mean, I got interviewed from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America. They are global, global bikes, which is well done, Lee. They're amazing. <laughs> Lee, why, why now? I think the, the 70s kind of pop culture is coming back, and I think that nostalgic element is really key. And I think, actually, the, the term icon gets branded about quite a lot. But I think this is a truly iconic, iconic view of the 70s. And I think actually there's there's people that will have stories, whether you had one or didn't have one. Actually, it's just an amazing feel good feel to bring kind of the fun back to to cycling and to, to, the, to the UK. And you could take someone on the back as well. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> you can try it. Definitely. In fact, you said you try it. We saw some pictures there in the piece from back in the 70s and 80s of people like struggling to reach the handlebars, struggling to get on the seat. I mean, they weren't necessarily the most ergonomic of creations, were they? No, certainly not. But actually, that you know, I think some of the parts of the bike were just super 
I know you use the term again, iconic, but you can just see that from the bigger wheel at the back to the front, the fully working gear shifter on the on in which we developed with Sturmy Archer, which actually we've been able to recreate that saddle sissy bar at the back. It's just kind of we've been able to do this. We we personally believe properly this time, and that's where we've. Oh, what do you mean properly this time? Properly, we did the Mark III back in uh, 2004. And there were some of the ele design elements that we weren't, weren't able to do then. Um, that's why it's taken four to five years in development to make this bike. And, and actually, that's where, from the feedback we've have, had over the last couple of months, we've, we, tr we truly believe we've done it, done it correctly this time. Dave, I can't believe how many people we saw in the piece, but people getting in touch with us this morning, for whom the chopper wasn't just a bike. It, mm. it started relationships, it began businesses, mm. it changed their Indeed. job prospects. I mean, for me, it changed my life. Back in 2015, I did the Tour de France. I mean, I must have been absolutely bonkers <laughs> yes. to do it. But um, the uh, driver in Paris was my future wife, Jane. Um, we've now two small children together. Hi, Sam. Hi, Andy. So it really has changed my, my, my life. I mean, I changed my career. I was a personal trainer. Um, I'm now a, a bike coach, and I teach children to ride the bikes. OK. Tour de France is hard enough. Well, yeah. How much harder is it when you're riding that kind of a bike? Put it this way, I won't be doing it again. No, <laughs> imagine. Um, I've got a lot of fond memories from, from doing it, but also, yeah, it was the toughest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Heavy, isn't it? Yeah, very heavy. I mean, the seat post I used was made out of solid steel. It was like a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. You know, it was heavier than the whole bike. <laughs> but, yeah, um, fond memories, but I trained the whole year to get ready for that Tour de France. I mean, the classic gear is what, you know, as a kid, I always used to love the look of that gear, but maybe not on mountains. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I treated myself to five years. Oh, at Tour de France. Mm -hmm. I, know, oh I see. Five years. Um, and I did, did change the seat. Otherwise, well, you I, changed. Ah, I what did. did you change the seat to? Um, I did uh, confess. I put on a normal bike seat because right. otherwise I had major chafing issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> I did change the saddle from this modern one. To you could have given them some advice on uh, bringing them up to date. Yeah, <laughs> I did maybe so. Uh, but he's done a great job. They look fantastic, don't they? We asked our viewers uh, to send in their pictures of their chopper bikes this morning. We've got some lovely ones, haven't we? We've had some great ones. Let's go to this. Is Don. <laughs> This is Don, taken in the 1970s in Bolton. Um, as you can see, someone else very interested in that bike. That's like a ranking picture in its it own does, right, that it? one, isn't it? Uh, this yeah. is from Justin Smith from Hunco in Lancashire. Uh, still got it, Justin. His partner <laughs> says he's been reliving his uh, childhood on his choppers. Uh. Pete's been in touch with one from the early 1970s, complete with handlebar tassels. <laughs> He says <laughs> he rode this bike until the frame broke, but says he didn't often ride it down the slide at the local park. So it might have been his... He did, sorry, ride it down the slide at the local park. It might have been his own fault. I mean, that takes a lot of work to destroy a bike that chunky. Yeah, and finally, after all those years, he's yeah. admitted it to us this morning. And here's Adam Cronin on his oh, chopper cool. in the Very 1980s. Cool. That's I'm not letting my brother sit on this, isn't it? Oh, actually, it's his cousin, Philip. Uh, lovely stuff. Have you noticed something? What? Every single picture this morning yes. from a bloke. I have. Mm. Are these I didn't blokey like to say things, it. Lee? I think they're they're true to the word to anybody. So I think whether it, whether you're a man or whether you're a female, I think you just love the design of it. So I think everybody's got a story, and that's kind of why we brought this to life. Okay. Should we just? I'm going to say the, the honest truth here, was that, which is that I had a pink bike with a basket on the front and tassels and flowers on it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. No. I know you didn't. So. I, in the 70s, I didn't know many girls who rode one of these unless it was maybe their brothers. Is that changing? Maybe. We shall see. Let's, let's, let, the, uh, let's let the fans, the, our, our old school fans and then the new, new fans decide whether it's going to be a male bike or a, or a male and female bike. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll see a lot of, lot of different people on the bike. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jane said in her piece then, I mean... It, it's quite a price tag, isn't it, for a lot of people? Whereas, I mean, they, they used to be something that a kid might get for Christmas, nearly a grand now. It's um, they're yeah, pricey. Look, 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 they're not, they're not, they're not cheap. Um, but what what we've had is five years worth of design craftsmanship, and actually really tried to bring some of the real design elements back. We don't believe this will be a mainstream product like it was back in the 70s, where we sold you know nearly two million of the bikes. Niche. Actually, this is going to be. For limited people, maybe it's going to be brand fans that, that love the bike in the 70s, or it's going to be actually people that really enjoy that pop culture from, from that 70s time. Uh, Dave, Hi. still 
riding your chopper on the roads of the yeah, northwest? I use it every day of my life. There you I go. use it to teach my lessons. Yeah, there and the go. kids love it. Especially when I try and do wheelies and backies on it and bunny <laughs> hops. But yeah, I use the bike every day of my life. Well, you can each give us a backy now, can't you? Because we've got two <laughs> bikes. We'll we'll do I don't think we're allowed. We haven't filled in the right form. No, the insurance <laughs> might struggle. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in. Yeah. Uh, we've enjoyed looking back and looking forward this morning uh, with the chopper. Great. I have particularly enjoyed your photos from the 70s. They have been brilliant, uh, haven't they? Really good. They really have. Uh, you're watching BBC Breakfast. Uh, it's 2023 uh, and it's 8.59. <laughs>